folks, we got a red dot. Welcome back to Akron's Hottest and Fastest Growing Show. Three, three out to go. I'm your host, Hank Forrester, coming to you live on this wonderful Wednesday evening here in Barberton, Ohio, just next door to the coffee pot. I've eaten breakfast there before many times over the years. So we're on Second Street here in Barberton for location purposes. I'm going to flip the camera around. We got viewers tuning in right now, and we are here with. Danielle and Tony, everybody wave at them. Everybody say hi. Hi. All right, so right now, uh, we're going to be focusing on Aspire Employment. That is where we are today, and we're going to be sharing this story. All right, so right now, uh, first I want to ask the question I always start with, with Danielle and with Tony, and there's no reason to be nervous, ladies. We are at home right now. All right, so Danielle, I always ask, what is your three throw story? Tell us about you. Story is I was born and raised in Doylestown, small little community. Um, have lived there my entire life. Moved away for just a little period of time, like we all want to move away from where we went to school and moved back. Um, I have five kids, four point five grandkids. Um, love my three three zero. Great community. Came to Barberton to start Aspire, another great community that we love, and that is my story. All right, and Tony, tell us about you. Um, well, when I moved here from Texas, I moved to Wadsworth, Ohio. Um, I always loved Barberton, though. Um, I moved away as well. I moved to Tennessee, got into some trouble, moved back up here, um, changed my life around thanks to Aspire, um, and now I'm working for them and loving life. Sweet, sweet. All right, so so Danielle. What, tell us about, what, what's your been, been your professional journey? Like, what did you do before Aspire? So I have been a nurse for 27 years. Um, spent most of my career in geriatrics, um, various nursing facilities. Probably the last 10 years of my career, I um, held some administrative positions. Um, went to a facility in Cleveland and was incredibly um, unhappy there. Um, selling a product that I didn't believe in. And that's kind of how Aspire was born. It was an idea that I tossed around for quite a while. Um, there was a huge need for, at the time, healthcare staffing. So that's what I started with. And then we had some, a lot of regulations with the Affordable Care Act. It was very difficult to break through those regulations. And with absolutely no business knowledge and never having set foot inside a manufacturer decided we would do manufacturing staffing. Okay. Um, had only driven past them and thought, ew, that's kind of messy looking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hold but, on, back up the clock. Yeah. So what year was this? When did Aspire begin? Um, I originally started in 2013. Okay. Care staffing from home. Okay. I did permanent placements of administrators, director of nursing, and long-term care facilities. Okay, and, and, and back then, was it just anyone could be employed, or were you also helping felons then at that at point? At that time, no. Um, due to some Senate bills, there was a lot of restrictions with who can be placed in health care. Okay. And, and who can hold a license okay. um, with health care. So, no, that was not open to felons. Okay. Uh, and quite honestly, probably in 2013 when I was doing health care staffing, I really didn't even know anybody that was a felon at the time. Okay. Um, so that wasn't even, you know, a thought. Okay. Um, and then in 2016, we opened the office here. Okay. So thir from 13 to 16, um, I just did healthcare staffing from home. Gotcha. All right. So you opened the office here. And then at some point, you s how, did it, how, did, how did it come to be that you made that pivot? What, what caused you to do that? How did that happen? My first um, job order that came in, I thought I was going to, you know, hit it out of the park. I needed to fill 13 positions, and it was just me working here. So I needed to fill 13 positions for a local manufacturer, and I filled three. Um, and it was huge failure. The company was upset. I was upset. I didn't know where to go, what to do. All of the people that were coming into the office had some type of background that was an excluding factor for that position. Okay. So I wasn't able, I wasn't able to meet the company's needs. Um, 
And that kind of kept going, kept going and kept going. So we're getting some job orders, you know, slowly while we're getting our name out there, but I'm not finding any candidates that are eligible to fill those orders because of background requirements. Okay. So eventually, you know, we're thinking, okay, so we have to have meet the requirements of the company, but we're not filling the need. So how can we kind of break through? So we met with one of the companies, myself, um, and at this time I had a, one office employee. Uh, we met with one of the companies and we explained to them, you're really missing out on some great employees. We have all these people who need work, but we can't find anywhere to place them. Um, and that's kind of how we came with the, you know, started bringing in the more re-entry population. Um, and it kind of just grew from there. We are at the point now where every company we work with um, locally accepts re-entry with no excluding backgrounds. All right, so, I mean, how, how end up do we want to get with this conversation, right? So, um, some of the questions, there's a lot of questions that come up, right? So, number one, you know, it is, it is extraordinarily difficult to find felons good work that will uh, provide for them a living wage. Right. Uh, and and it's, it's just, this is just one of the things that we're dealing with in society right now, and the pandemic has especially brought it to the forefront and brought it to the light, okay? Um, so Tony, why don't you tell us, Tony, you mentioned that you had gotten in trouble, so why don't you tell us briefly a little bit about your story if you want to. Um, so when I, um, okay, so I was in prison in Tennessee and I came up here on parole. Um, a friend of mine actually worked in the office and I didn't know if she, you know, I had some, issues, I didn't know how things were because I'm trying to change my life around and blah, blah, blah. So she um, got a hold of me on Facebook and I was like, man, you know, I just got out, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, I got a job for you if you need one. And I'm like, you're kidding me, right? She's like, yeah, just come into my office. And it was so simple and easy. And the atmosphere here made me feel so much better because I was scared. Okay. Um, because I'm a, I'm a felon now, and I just, you know, who's going to hire me? Um, I got two weeks out of prison. I was working 40 hours a week um, through Aspire. Uh, the pandemic happened. And I'm like, oh, no, this just cannot be happening. I'm just starting to go somewhere. Um, I had things to get done, you know. They put me somewhere else. I got sick. Still going to work, you know, having some surgeries and stuff. And so the place I was working for through Aspire was going to put me in their office. And I come in, and I'm like, yay, you know, great. Um, that's perfect. I'll be there, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I said, well, let them know that I went to school for that back in the day, you know. She's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, she's like, I'm going to keep you here. Okay. So now I'm working for Aspire, and I have a great sense of the reentry need. I can relate. I'm not doing anything different than anybody else that I want to help. I actually go to a reentry um, community partners around here. Um, I try to get people out of prison that are going the right way, something like I did, and I give them hope where they find respect in that. And okay. um, I'm just doing, I've come up, and I think that's higher for it more than anything. I respect Danielle, she's inspiring. So Danielle, let's talk about some of the challenges and some of the stigmas that face felons today in terms of reentry, especially into the workforce. What are some of the what are some of the obstacles that that men and women face in this scenario? So I think the biggest obstacle is having employers that have an open mind enough to allow to give them a chance, um, and that's one of the things that we work so hard. Um, we have a couple locations that were absolutely no hire, and I said, you know what? We're gonna send them, and when they find out they're felons, I'm gonna take the hit for it. So that's exactly what we did. They ended up being fabulous employees, and those companies now um, are welcome felons. So I think that, first of all, bringing them into our location and making them feel like they are a human being, they're important, their life means something, and we appreciate them, that's the first step. Um, we always ask, what's your background look like? And we always follow it by, it doesn't matter, we don't care, we just need to know, so that way we can sometimes explain those things to the employer. So if we have an employer that says they don't want anyone that has um, burglary, 
Well, we need to know what was that burglary because that and how, long ago. and how long ago was it? Because maybe you were charged and convicted of burglary, but maybe that was kicking in someone's door because of a fight. Uh, maybe you were sleeping in an abandoned house because you were homeless and you were using those utilities that were still on and now you're charged with burglary. So are you really this dangerous, hardened person that's going to go in and rob their facility? Absolutely not. Um, maybe you were in a bad place 10 years ago and you needed to feed your children and you stole some milk and bread. Does that mean that you're going to go steal equipment from the job site? Absolutely not. So these are the things we want to know every person that walks through the store's story. Yeah. And I think we, we do. do. We do. And, and everybody deserves a second chance because sometimes even second, third, fourth, and fifth right. around here. <laughs> um, around here we, we do do it a little more than two or three. Uh, mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you're ready, you're ready. Right. And that one time is going to be that one time you know you found your spot. You found where you're comfortable working, right. and you do a good job, and you're appreciated, and no matter what, through us. So, so how do you deal with that? That's a, that's the next question. Is when you do have a, a, I don't want to use the word a failure, but when you do have a setback with someone, um, what's the next steps that you do in that in that scenario? So the next step is we sit down with them and we find out why it didn't work. So why did you leave work? Why did you not show up? Why did you quit? What were the barriers? Is there anything we can do? Right, for and you what can we do to remove here. those barriers? Um, and through those conversations, we put a lot of things in place. You know, we offer um, bus passes. We buy any tangible work supplies that they need to get started at a location. Um, is it that it just wasn't the right fit? Maybe it's not the right shift. Maybe they're just not ready, um, like Tony said. So we just keep we keep working until we find the right fit for them. Um, we've had situations where. They weren't ready because maybe they've relapsed. So my employees will leave during the workday. We have a lot of connections with um, some recovery facilities. They will leave and take that person right to recovery and we promise them a job when they um, yeah. are finished with their recovery. If they complete it successfully, obviously, um, we can put them back to work as soon as they're done. And we can't take all the credit because our clients and our work sites Wonderful. work really, really hard with us um, to make sure that our employees are happy, they're safe, they're healthy, and if there is a situation, they always promise them employment when that is resolved. Yeah. Um, I mean, we really are blessed to have some really great clients. Yeah. Okay. What are some of the other services that you guys offer besides just the job placement aspect? Um, so I feel sometimes we're so much more of a social service agency yes. <laughs> than an employment agency. Mm -hmm. So. We have employees that come in and on any given day at any given time, of course, socially distanced, you will find people in here just who need to talk, um, who maybe need us to help them figure out housing. Maybe they need to know where are the recovery meetings. Maybe they need to figure out the bus schedule because we get a lot of people here, <clears throat> excuse me, who are new to the bus because they've lost transportation. They don't know how to ride the bus. They don't know how to get the stops. So we sit down with them, we show them the bus schedule, how to navigate it. Um, like I said, we provide all their tangible work supplies from work boots, safety glasses, gloves, coats. To be honest, we've let homeless employees sleep in the office at night and just said a prayer that they don't steal our computers. Um, and we've been very fortunate and very, very lucky. Um, Tony has had homeless employees sleeping upstairs in her apartment. Dawn has had homeless employees sleeping in her basement. Um, I really think there's probably not much that we won't do for our employees. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because, again, there's another whole set of stigma around folks that are homeless as well that they don't want to work, right? right. So um, just I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that really adds to the conversation of a much deeper level in terms of what we need to dive into as a society. Right. Yes. Um, so, all right, so next is how do people... All right, let's say someone's out there right now and they're watching this. Mm -hmm. How do they get a hold of you guys and, and, and what kind of jobs are available specifically? I mean, what, is there like a portal they go to on, the, on, your, on your website or how does that work? So we like everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, to come in person because we, again, like to know everyone's story. We do everything one-stop shop. So we bring you in, we interview you, you complete all your paperwork, you do your in-house drug testing, and then we put you to work. Um, we post on Facebook a lot of our open jobs. Right now we have over 100 openings in any industry you can think of. We have warehouse, light industrial manufacturing, 
uh, restaurants, restaurants, medical mm -hmm. assisting, mm -hmm. pretty much anything that you can think of. Um, and so if you want to work, keyword want, um, you will not leave this office without a job. And several times you will come back maybe and you will leave this office with multiple jobs over the course right. of the time that you're with us. Um, we have a really great um, rate of employees getting hired in. So every single job we have is a 90 day to hire um, or somewhere compatible with that 90 days or comparable. Um, so we do not put people to work for two or three weeks and then say, oh, guess what, now you're out of a job. Um, if we do have short-term assignments, the employees are always aware of that, and maybe they're just working that short-term until the position that they're waiting for becomes available. Okay. Um, but they're all long-term um, commitments with great benefits. We offer health benefits from day one, life insurance, dental, vision, um, disability. Yeah, short-term, yeah. Short -term, yes, yeah. Life insurance, yeah. Okay. What about the flip side? Yes. What about the employers, okay? Let's say an employer, do they, how does that work? Do they register with you guys and say, hey, we would like to attain your, so, retain your services? It's so easy. We really make it as simple as possible. So it takes one phone call to the office, um, an email, uh, Facebook message that you need employees, and we can have it ready to go within 24 hours. Um, we have a huge pool of people who are looking for a very specific industry work that are ready to go. Um, and I think that we can, we normally are able to fill positions within 24 hours yeah. with excellent employees. We do things a little bit different, so we don't just throw things at the wall to see what'll stick. Um, we don't herd our employees like sheep to the slaughter into jobs. Um, we really try and match them with what they wanna do. The shift they wanna work, the place, the position that they want. Um, sometimes, you know, everybody has to start somewhere. So maybe they want a position paying $20 an hour. That's not available but let's say 12 is better than zero. So if we can start you at 12 and you can show us that you're great, you're gonna show up to work, you're keeping up with your um, attendance, then we have no problem then transitioning you to those better paying positions when they open. Okay. Closing thoughts, Tony, what do you got? Um, uh, we are women owned and women ran and we're coming up, <laughs> believe that. Okay. Come see us. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel. My closing thought is Tony keeps the office very on point, going on every point. day. <laughs> and a wee, just a wee bit lighthearted, just a, just a wee bit, just I a wee always, bit. I think my closing thought is when you walk through our door, I always think to myself, if you've ever seen the movie, um, the Big Fat Greek Wedding, that's what you're walking into when you walk oh, in here. It's, it's the wild. minute you walk in the door, we're, it's real. So you, we music, you, you got not, music on too? Yeah. Yes, actually we do. <laughs> around like who are you talking to we're like, no, I'm glad you're here yeah. um, no one ever leaves this office without us telling them that we appreciate them yeah. and we're thankful for them and so they're part of our family and folks we'll go ahead and put up the links in the comments of where they're located again they're on second street here in Barberton right next to the coffee pot if you're familiar uh, which is one one street over from Lake Ann in the Barberton area um, on top of that we'll put up any kind of links that they have as far as to their website uh, with their Facebook page and, and to show some of those job offerings as well. All right. So, ladies, thank you so much for having me. Thank Thanks for inviting you. me in. Thank and you. Appreciate it. And uh, appreciate tomorrow, you. Rachel's doing uh, some coverage. Uh, one of our Akron, uh, University of Akron interns is very motivated to get started. She's already done a Rubber City Review show for us. Um, tomorrow, she's doing an interview of a local uh, blogger that, that does like historical like home research in the 330. So, they like track down historical homes. So that's tomorrow night, and then on uh, Friday morning, we'll be introducing one of our newer sponsors, which is a uh, housing development area up in, I believe, Stowe or Hudson area. But until then, I don't know where I'm going, but there ain't no sense of being late. Everybody out there, say goodnight, Shirley. Good night, Shirley. Good night, Shirley. <laughs>